I think a little bit of history is important to have so we know what we're um, surrounded by and who contributed it. Um, yes, Ann? Well, uh, we have had um, assisting pastors and things like that there, or an elder, but it just depends on what's going on, but two looked better than one. Are they comfortable? No. (laughs) They're just wooden chairs. That way I don't fall asleep. Actually, I hardly ever sit in them except for the... Uh, Except for the... In chapel, you sit in I do, but I I normally stand during the service. And speaking of which, let's stand to begin just briefly with a little uh, prayer as we did the last time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. You may be seated. And the reading from the epistle from this past Sunday, which is also what I'll be preaching on tonight at Vespers, is from Hebrews chapter 4. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Now, before we get into this, um, let me just ask if you can tell. When you hear this, no creature is hidden from his sight. Does that sound like good stuff or not so good stuff? Hmm? Well, there's a place in the Gospels where Jesus says, not even a sparrow falls to the ground without his, without his heavenly Father noticing. Does that sound good or not so good? It sounds good. It sounds like he's watching over his creation, and he sees, okay? And he doesn't miss anything, so he knows. But then, that other part. But all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Does that sound like good news or not so good news? You think your mom and your dad don't know. Maybe they don't. But who does? God. (laughs) You think you're keeping a secret? (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. Think again. You're not keeping anything from God. So that doesn't sound that great. Which doctrine gives us the not-so-great news about things? You can't get a shot. No, which doctrine? A doctrine is a teaching. <laughs> uh, which, what are the two doctrines that we talk about in the Bible? Do you know? What, what did you say? Paul. You said Paul? Paul's not a teaching. Paul's a person. <laughs> a teaching. Like a story? Well, no. A doctrine is a teaching, and this one is the one that tells us about our sins. And then there's another one that tells us about the good news that God has given us his son who died and rose for the forgiveness of our sins. First Testament, Old Testament, New Testament. 
Well, no, we're not going to say Old Testament and New Testament because both of those doctrines are in the Old Testament and both of those doctrines are in the New Testament. In fact, both of them were just there, that God sees everything, and that's good because he watches over you, but he also sees and knows everything. What you said, shh, don't tell anybody. Don't tell mom and dad. God's going, I'm right here. (laughs) I know. You don't know the two doctrines. Well, the first doctrine is taught us in the first chief part of the small catechism. What's the first chief part of the catechism? The Ten Commandments. They are called the Uh, law. law. Have you heard of law? Yes. The law and the The law, the law is the first one, and it shows us our sins. What's the second chief doctrine? Articles. Well, no, that, those are parts of the creed, but that's where we get the second chief doctrine. That's the creed. But what is the law and the... Petitions. You heard of the law and the gospel? Oh. <laughs> Have you heard of all this? I'm not telling you something new, am I? Hopefully you hear that. I use that a lot in my sermons and my preaching. The law and the gospel. The law shows us our sin. The gospel shows us our Savior. The law tells us everybody is naked and exposed before God, so don't try hiding. You can Hide all you want, but God knows where you are and God knows what you've done and God knows what you're thinking and feeling in your heart. That's the law that says, "Uh uh-oh. And the gospel comes along and says, but in Christ, he has clothed you with his righteousness so that when God looks at you, he looks at you in Jesus. He sees his son. And that's good news. That's the forgiveness of sins. Does that make sense? Yes? The story that follows that is Jared and the big fish. That follows what? Uh, He sees you and he tries to run away. Well, that certainly was true. And he knew exactly where Jonah was heading. And Jonah could could run, but he couldn't hide. Okay? Are we playing footsies there? (laughs) Are you just... Your leg's moving. All right. So we've got those two chief doctrines. You see that after the Ten Commandments there? Are you looking on your sheet? Okay. Law and gospel. Of course, we could go through all of the Ten Commandments, right? You shall have no other gods. Ooh, but you do have other gods. You have your money. You do. They're false gods. Things that you trust. Things that you freak out about. Things that you pout about. Oh, I'm so upset. I don't this or I don't that. And God's going, what am I, chopped liver? I'm still with you. You still got me. Yeah, but my friends don't play with me or this or that. Sometimes we get really bummed out about stuff, don't we? And and. If somebody comes along and says, but God still loves you, that makes you immediately feel better, right? No, it doesn't. And that's having another God than God. So we don't keep the first commandment. Who did? Jesus Jesus did. Jesus kept all of the commandments and he loved you. He loved his father and he loved you. And that's what rescues you and me. That's what saves Jesus. He keeps the law. We don't. Second commandment, do not miss you. You use the name of the Lord your God. And we do all the time because every time somebody says something like a brother or a sister, we would never just say, shut up, or do something like that. We'd never say, stupid, or we would never use our mouths against anybody. First, we would go, oh, Heavenly Father, I'm feeling like saying something really mean to my brother or my sister. So put a guard over my lips and help me be nice. That's what we do, right? Mm -hmm. No. You just let your mouth blurt out whatever bad thing you feel like saying because you're mad at the moment, right? So instead of praying, 
Pray, praise, and give thanks. Instead of calling on God's name in every trouble, we forget to use our mouths for that prayer. So we're not keeping the second commandment like we should. But who did? Jesus. He used his lips to bless and not to curse. He used his lips to ask his Father for your grace and mercy, and that's what the Father answers and gives us. Third commandment. You shall not. You You should remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Well, good. And we, and we. I'm recording just the, not not video, but just audio, just for a record of our of our time together. Uh, yeah, the third commandment uh, to hold God's word sacred and gladly hear and learn it. So every time it's time for Bible study at home for devotion, which we have every day, um, we're just so glad for that, right? Or do we ever go? Mm. Well, that's good. <laughs> are, we, are we always excited about that? No, we're not always excited about that. Who was always excited to be going to the Lord? Yeah, Jesus. He's the one who keeps the word perfectly and honors his father. Um, and then the, that gets us to the fourth commandment. You sh- uh, yeah. And you always say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And you never talk back and you never make mom or dad say anything twice. Right? No. no. Jesus, though, he keeps the fourth commandment in one important time, in one important place, in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night before he was crucified. What did he ask his father three times? No, he didn't say, please be with me and help me do this really hard thing. What did he say? Anybody Who's remember? Prayer? No, forgive them. He didn't say that yet. Does anybody remember what Jesus prayed three times? God be with me. No. <laughs> Father, if it be your will, that will be done. <laughs> not yet. First, Father, if it be your will, don't make me have to do this. I don't want to have to die. Did he sin there? Shh. He didn't say those words, but that's what he was asking. Let this cup pass from me. That's what he prayed. That's the cup of suffering. He asked his father if it was possible that he not have to die. Now, no, he did not sin in doing that because he also followed it up by this. Nevertheless... Not my will, but thy will be done. Now, he does that for a very important reason. You think he went to the cross going, hey, I get to die today. I'm so looking forward to it. I get to bear the weight of the entire world and suffer all of the hell that every sinner from Adam to the last person born has deserved. I get to do all that. No. No. He is, in all honesty, telling you that this is the hardest thing that anybody has ever had to do. And even Christ is going. I mean, he's sweating out blood. You've never been so anxious, so anguished, that you would have blood just coming out of your pores. But he had that. The devil was attacking him, for sure. But Jesus wasn't sinning. Jesus was being honest. If it's possible, Father, please, let's do this a different way. But then just as quickly said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And for your sake, he did the hardest thing that anyone has ever done, even something so hard that he wanted not to have to do it. But he did it because there was no other way for you and me to be saved. That puts a different perspective or picture on all of that, doesn't it? Okay? So he honors his father perfectly. He keeps all of the commandments. And you mentioned the statement of Jesus on the cross. Um, Father, forgive them. Didn't you say that? Which commandment do you think Jesus is keeping there when he says to those people who are spitting on him? Can you imagine? You're dying for these people and they're spitting on you. They have beaten you up They've lied about you. They have 
you know, taken the skin off of your back with their whips, and then they've driven nails through you, and they're laughing and jeering at you, saying, if, you're, if, if God really loves you, then come down and take yourself off the cross, you know? Um, and, I mean, what would I do in that situation? I'd go, can we have a thunderbolt here? Because that guy really just made me mad. <laughs> okay? I'd be calling down fire from heaven. What does Jesus pray? Father, forgive them for they for they don't know what they're doing. Now, I think they did. But which commandment do you think Jesus is keeping there? Well, he is praying to his father. He isn't murdering. He's not calling down fire from heaven. So that's well, yeah, not, he's not breaking the fifth commandment. You murder from your words. That's true. He's not angry at them. That's correct. How about the eighth commandment? He's explaining everything in the... Yeah. He is talking to his father as if we ought to forgive them because if they really understood, they wouldn't do this. Unlike you and I, who from the time we were really little, somebody bumped into us, we got upset, the teacher said it was an accident. No, uh it was on purpose. <laughs> Do you know, you can't tell that it's on purpose unless you can look inside somebody's heart and mind and tell that they were doing that on purpose. Maybe it was an accident. But we've been putting the worst construction on people from the day we were, well, not the day we were born, but the day we could talk. Okay? <clears throat> Yeah, Jesus keeps the commandments, all of them. But we don't need, and that's good news because that's why we are saved. He keeps the law and then he dies as one who didn't. Now, the law, the Ten Commandments, can be broken into two parts. Two tablets, two tables of the law. What does the first table of the law have to do with? First three, um, about honoring God. Yes, Honoring or loving God. That's right. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and mind. Now, what's the second table of the law? Love your neighbor as yourself. And who are your first neighbors in your life? Mom and dad. That's right. So it's really all the rest of the commandments. But yes, love. Love is the fulfillment of the law. And Jesus loved us. And kept the law in our place. All right, so that's the law, and it shows us our sin. It also shows us the way we are to love God and our neighbor, okay? Now, we are to strive toward that, you know? We're going to fail at that, but then we ask God's mercy and forgiveness for Jesus' sake and ask him to help us to do better, and we're learning that as children of our parents. The Apostles' Creed is... The second chief doctrine. What's the second chief doctrine again? Review time. Uh, um, the... Hmm? the gospel. The gospel. Good. So we've got the meanings of the articles. You've probably, I think you've all told me. Um, um, We're doing the third article. You're doing the third article. Well, let's. <clears throat> okay. Let's, uh, let's try. The first article of the creed has to do with which person of the Trinity? Na- name him. God. Well, we've got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah, Father is God, Son is God, Holy Spirit is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. But the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. Does that make sense? Yes. They're all one person. <laughs> no, there are three persons, but one divine being. The Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Spirit, and the Spirit is not the Father. Okay. But the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, yet they are not three gods, but one God. And not the same person, because only one person of the Trinity became man. And he he is the Son. son. So the Father did not become man, and the Holy Spirit did not become man. So neither the Father nor the Son died and rose. Neither the Father nor the Spirit died and rose, but only the Son. So this is really confusing. You will never understand the Trinity. This is what we call a divine mystery. So we don't try to understand it, but we learn to confess it according to what the scriptures have taught. Okay? Well, 
Jesus spoke in parables because he wanted to teach them more than to let them understand. Exactly. And he's still teaching me at 61 years old. I've got a lot yet to learn. I'm still a kindergartner when it comes to the faith. I'm still learning. So that's the joy. In fact, we'll be learning for all eternity. There will always be something wonderfully new for us in in the eternal kingdom. But the first article of the creed confesses God the Father. I believe in God the Father. Father, Okay, let's pause. Let's pause with the Father first. And by the way, we say, I believe. Do you know what the Latin for I believe is? It gives us the name of this second uh, second part of the catechism. The second part of, yes, it's the doctrine of the gospel. But the apostles' creed. Now that comes from the Latin for I believe. Does anybody know what the Latin for I believe is? Credo. That's, that's, why when we see, that's why when we see something that is almost impossible to believe, I can't believe it. We call it incredible. That means it's not possible to believe. It's incredible. It comes from the Latin credo, which means I believe, and that's what gives us creed. So we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Stop. What does this mean? Do we know what that means? Now, if you don't, there's a song that we've been singing. Some of you might remember singing it. I believe in God the Father. No, no, no. I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all of my members, my reason and all of my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and, I know we sing it twice, he also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife, children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all dangers, guards and protects me from all evil. And all this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. It's a whole lot easier when you sing it, isn't it? Where did you get that song? I made that up. I I wrote that song. I didn't write any of the words. I just wrote the songs to match the words, okay? Well, the rhythm and the melody and things like that. It just somehow worked well with that one. I've done that one for the first article. I've done it for the second article, but I've not been able to make the third article work in a song yet, so I don't have the third article. That's just the meaning. We'll get to that in a second. Have you been looking at the, have, at the meaning of the uh, first article? I believe that I cannot by my own reason. I'm sorry, I'm in the third article. I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul. So you know the lyrics, you know the words. You could have sung along. You just didn't know the melody, right? They know a different song. Oh, that's fine. Different songs are fine. Do you know a different song? Go ahead, Liam and Larkham, have a duet. We'd like to hear you sing. You don't want to sing? (laughs) You're amongst friends. Oh, Brixton, do you have a song? <laughs> how far, lo- how far are, along are you in uh, learning the meaning? No, I'm talking to you. You just sang it with me, so I know you. <laughs> how far have you guys gotten? No, I've done pretty much the whole thing. Okay, all right, well, good. Well, can you say it? Huh, what, Hunter? Not even close. Not even close? Focus on this right now. I believe that God has made me and all creatures. He's made us through our parents, and he still takes care of us. He gives us all that we need, clothing, shoes, house, homeland, all the stuff that we need to support this body and life. Okay? Have you gotten into any of this at all, Brixton? Okay, that's fine. You keep, keep working on that. I mean, it's, it's, it, it comes after a while and, and, and over time. So don't worry about not having it. But that was something we would sing a lot at school. 
Um, so God has made us and he takes care of us and he guards and protects us from all evil. And that's really important for us to remember daily and much. Um, the second article of the creed has to do with which person of the Trinity? Oh, um, son. 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 Did you know that? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And pause. And when we say that he is seated at the right hand of the Father, please keep this in mind. When Jesus ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father, it doesn't mean he left us. We can't see him. Do you know anything about logic? Yes. Have you learned anything about logic? Oh, the logic puzzle. Where is God not? Hell. We confess that God, that there's no place that anyone can go that God is not. Now, he's not there for their life, forgiveness, and salvation. But we would say that God is, have you ever heard the word Omnipresent. No. Yes. Didn't you guys listen, watch those videos? Yes, we did. Okay. Did you watch the videos? We all okay. did. We all watched them. I use those omni words. They're helpful. They're not required, but they tell us something about God. He is present passive. everywhere. Not present passive. <laughs> Okay. God is present everywhere. Okay? If God is present everywhere, then his right hand is everywhere. And if Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, then Christ hasn't gone away. He's still with us. We just can't see him. We can't hear him. He's gone up to look at everybody. He is the Bible says, it's this in Ephesians chapter 4, it says that Christ who descended has ascended far above the heavens that he might fill all things. Where is heaven up or down? That's a good question. Because China, is that up or down? It's down. But then in China, they would be saying, is the United States up or down? And they'd say down. So it's kind of... Both. It's spiritual. So, yeah, you can't really talk about that. It would be like, where, where are you when you step outside of time and space? I mean, it's way beyond our, our limited minds to understand. But God is not only present everywhere, but he is with Adam and Eve at the same time that he is with you and me. Okay, there, there, there are some things that even 61-year-old pastors are never going to understand, but we can confess these things, yes? What about the Tower of Babel? Weren't they, like, building it up to heaven? Yeah, so well, they climb up to heaven. Well, yes, but they weren't literally thinking they were going to get out of the stratosphere and into space and past Alpha Centauri and all those other things. But they, they were building a name for themselves by this tower that was reaching up to the heavens. Uh, that kind of thing, all right? Does that make sense? Yeah, all right. So we've got the second article of the creed. And you guys probably don't remember this song because Mrs. Sawyer said she forgot it and so she didn't start keep singing it. But the second article of the creed, um, I believe that Jesus Christ, true God begotten of the Father from Eternity and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death that I may be his own, 
Live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Have you guys been working on this? Just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Have you talked about that at all? Or yeah, we okay. Have. okay. Um, but we only say it. We never That's fine. That's fine. You don't need to sing it. That was just one way that I was trying to help kids a long time ago. Um, what are the two natures of Christ? We just sang it. And you would say it if you were learning this, the meaning of the second article. I believe in Jesus Christ, true God, God begotten of his Father from eternity, and also man. true man. So what are the two natures of Christ? God and man. He's truly, fully God He's truly, fully man. Okay? Make sense? So when Jesus died, that is not just the death of an ordinary man. It's the death of the second person of the Trinity, true God, in your behalf and mine. Okay? Um, what does crucified mean? It comes from crux, which is Latin for cross. So crucify means to be executed on a cross or to die on a cross. Okay. okay? Well, Jesus, of course, is risen from the dead, right? So he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is in glory. When we die, now you're talking about Christians dying? Well, St. Paul says when he expected to die, he says... I desire to be with Christ. So what he's saying is, when we die as Christians, we are with Christ. Now, what does that mean? I don't fully know. What I do know is, we are going to be raised again in the body when Jesus returns. And then we will be like he is, glorified like he is. So all of that is hard for me to understand, because I... Can you, can you imagine being forever... Larkin will live forever. No. <laughs> so will Liam. Yeah, <laughs> so will Brixton and the Hunter and Pippa S and Lady Kate. We will all live. Can you imagine, though, being eternal, never, ever ending? That would be sad. What do you mean? That would be what? That would be sad. Sad? That's the... <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let's not rush past what Pippa just said. She said that would be sad. Why? That's your because, eternal... Because everybody else will die and you will be the only person on the earth. And no, 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 no. We're not talking about living on the earth. I mean, we're not... We're, we're, we're talking about when Christ returns and raises up me and all the dead and gives eternal life to all believers in Christ. So you would just be on earth by yourself. Like Wall-E... Have you seen Wally? Yes. Yeah, you, you you don't want to be the only one on earth and everybody else is gone. Okay, I get that. Now I just wanted to understand what you meant by sad. Okay, but think about that. What it means to be eternal is something that even I can't fully understand because you know I'm not eternal in that sense yet, but I will be and you will be when Christ returns. Yes. Do animals go to heaven? <laughs> We don't know. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that isn't told to us. What does God have in mind? I don't know. What we do know is what we do know is God created this world perfectly and that included animals as well as human beings. And the Bible talks about the new heaven, the sky, and the new earth like God's not giving up on his creation. So, does that mean there is a place even for germs? For, the, for germs? No, this would be per. If they're germs, they're good germs. They it. won't hurt us. <laughs> they, don't hurt, they don't create. Corruption. Can you imagine a time when mosquitoes didn't bite you? Uh, <laughs> no, I love it. I attract them. All my blood does eat them. A lot of this stuff we just don't know the answers to, but they're fun to think about. All right. Yes. When we, when we die and go, and go to heaven, we're going to ask the, um, God 
I know. Well, he might say this. I didn't make them to bite and suck blood at first. Because when, um, that, was a, came into the world, that was a part of Sid. Maybe that's his answer. They just randomly grew. Like, just randomly grew because, you know, he didn't create... We're almost, we're almost going to be finished here. He didn't create us to hurt and harm each other. And yet, because of sin, who was the first murderer? Cain. Cain. Cain killed whom? Abel. Abel. Abel, his own brother. Okay? That was not part of God's original plan, but that happened because of sin. All right. I think what I want to do here in closing, <clears throat> um, just to review a couple of things from last week, and um, this is stuff that we're going to keep talking about, but you know, 40, you know, 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes even, doesn't give us as much time as we would like, but... Uh, we're going to keep working with this. Uh, do you rem- This is review questions on the inside. We're, g- we're going to be talking about this in Vespers, and I always encourage everybody to uh, participate in those opportunities too. I know that um, Pippa and Lady Kate are usually here. Uh, to whom does God give the responsibility of daily instruction in the Word and Faith? If it's the pastor, then I need to be at everybody's house every day. The church? And then the church has to be at everybody's... The mother and father. Moms and dads. They're the ones who are in the house every day. God gives the responsibility to them. Remember, we looked at Deuteronomy 6 last week. How many books of the Bible can you name to help you find passages more quickly? Yes? Just give me at numbers. Five? Five? Three, two, one, five. You could say four. Ten, nine. I'd say nine. You could say up to nine. How many are there? Oh, wait. How many can we say or how many will help you know? No, how many can you say? About four. About four. Brixton? Larkin? Two. Two? Liam? Nine. Did you say none or Nine. 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 We got to keep our This might have this huge chart full of the. Uh, All right. Things. Genesis. Exodus. Exodus Leviticus, Leviticus. Numbers. Leviticus, Deuteronomy. Joshua. Judges. Ruth. First and Second Samuel. First and Second Kings. First and Second Chronicles. Ezra. Nehemiah. Esther. Job. Psalms. Proverbs. Ecclesi. Okay. okay. Ecclesi. You guys know any of those? Okay. Well, we won't work. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament. After that comes Acts, Romans, First and Second Corinthians. All right, you're you're not responsible for this yet, but these are good things to know so that we can find our way through them. Just like if you need to find a word that starts with F, you go to F. You go to F because you know that if you open it up and you're on M, then which direction do you need to go? You need to go backwards because A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. We learn these so that one of the benefits of it is we know how to find things alphabetically. And if we learn the books of the Bible, we know how to find them without needing page numbers. So hold on. Uh, do you know what an epistle is? You've heard it? Oh, you heard the word. For a epistle is a word for a letter. That's all that means. Okay. Uh, do you know what other books of the Bible are called? Like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? What are they called? Um, the Gospels. The Gospels. And uh, the first five books of the Bible are called the books of whom? Who wrote those? Moses. Moses. Sometimes we call them the law uh, or the Torah. But they've got gospel in them too, just like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have law as well as gospel in them. Because there are times when I'll read a reading and it'll talk about a guy who shows up at a banquet unprepared and the master of the banquet says, tie, bind him up and tie him into outer darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's not good news. That's bad news. Okay. So the gospels also have law in them. Um, what are the six chief parts of the catechism? And, you know... We've already gone over those. Ten Commandments. Uh, Apostles' Creed. Petitions. 
Okay, you keep saying petitions. That, um, these are the Lord. That's the Lord's prayer. Those are the parts of the Lord's prayer. Petitions are requests. Fourth is baptism, then confession, and then Lord's supper, the sacrament of the altar. That's right. And five of those. Do you know how Luther head, headed them? As the head of the family should teach it in a simple way. So he's making sure that we know who's supposed to be teaching this in the home. In fact, he used a German word, Hausvater, which means house father. But moms can help too. All right, we're almost finished here. Um, let's jump down, shall we? On this page, you got your, your thing open. Can anyone be saved by keeping the law? No. Yes. So somebody can keep the law perfectly and so be saved. No. Nobody can keep the law perfectly, so no one could be saved by keeping the law. Um, what doctrine teaches us how we are saved, which is the doctrine that teaches us the good news that we're saved by Jesus dying and rising. Hmm? I have no idea. We've been talking about that the whole time here. What are the two chief doctrines or teachings? Oh, um, the law and gospel. The law and gospel. Which one shows us our Savior? The law, gospel. Gospel. Hmm? The law, like the Ten Commandments. Okay, right now your life be- depends on it. What are you going to say? Gospel. Uh, gospel. It's the gospel, the good news that Jesus died and rose again. The law tells you what you got to do, and you don't do it. Okay. If you could keep the first commandment, how many of the other commandments would you keep? Zero. If you could keep the first commandment perfectly, how many of the other... You would keep all of the commandments. If you could keep the first commandment perfectly, you'd be perfect. But we can't do that. And so the one who is perfect, who kept all the commandments, namely... Jesus is your Savior and salvation. That's the good news or the gospel, okay? Um, So how come we don't want to hear and learn all this better than we know and learn it? Uh, Can somebody read Romans 3, 10 through 12 for us? That's printed for you. Uh, Peppa? It's Romans 3, 10 through 12. No one does good, not even one, except for Jesus. That's telling us the truth about ourselves. And that's, of course, not a truth that's going to save us. It's going to call us to repentance. And Jesus is the one who saves. All right, we have the, the, the parable from Sunday, which I'm not going to read all together. But the sower sows seed. Some of it falls on rocky places. Some falls on, falls on shallow soil. Some the... the hmm? thorns and chokes out we get we get busy that's right all that kind of stuff and some falls on good soil and bears a hun, um, abundant fruit which of these soils can we be and which do you think jesus wants to make us uh, we can be the uh, the ones that fall on the good soil well that's what he wants to make us he sure wants to make us that but what are we usually we are all the rest. That's right. We get so busy. We get so distracted. We say, I don't have enough time. Have you ever said that before? Yes. Come to Wednesday service. Well, we don't have enough time. And, and then somebody falls down, breaks an arm, and suddenly where are we heading? Yeah. yeah, and we're there all night waiting for a doctor. I didn't think we had enough time. I thought the kids all needed to get into bed in an early time. What just changed? We thought we couldn't make a change, and God said, ha, ha, ha. It's not like he broke your arm or anything, but remember, he sees everything. He knows all, and sometimes he lets things happen so that we learn. If only we would stop and think, I thought I didn't have the time, and suddenly I find that I do. Those are important things for us to learn. I'm going to close with this. Um, 
Jesus wants to make us the good soil that is constantly hearing his word, and so did Martin Luther. So Martin Luther says this, at Vespers, one might sing the Magnificat or the Te Deum Laudamus. Usually we sing that, and we will once, at, uh, once Lent starts up again, so that the youth remain close to the scriptures. During the week, there should be preaching on... <laughs> and... <laughs> and I'll admit, I'm not the greatest soil there is because i got to come up here and preach on a Friday night too. <laughs> I don't want to come up here on a Friday night and have a church service. I'd like to relax at home. But at least we get in Wednesdays. How do we react to that? Yay! Gladly hear and learn it. Or, hmm. <laughs> what do you think Luther wants to make of us? Good, deep, rich soil that's well planted and producing Oh, the stuff that kind of sometimes, sort of, not always, though, please, not on a Friday night. He wants to make us the good, rich, deep soil, doesn't he? <laughs> but that's a lot of work, and so we keep at it, and mainly Jesus does, too, and the Holy Spirit does also. So you guys are into the third commandment, um, the third article of the creed with the Holy Spirit? Okay. Well, next time we'll be hitting more of that, okay? So work on those, um, uh, the meaning for that. I mean, I, I'm, just be familiar with it because we're going to be talking about that. You probably already know the beginning of it. I believe that I... Okay, you guys working on any of these things? <laughs> I'm, I started it. I just completely know. Okay, so you know it from... Oh, from, okay, from... From back when? Back in the day. From doing it for like three years. For doing it three years here. Okay, yeah. All right, we'll keep working on that, and we're giving you plenty of time. So don't, don't freak out about any of this stuff. We've got as much time as we need. Okay? All right, let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for all of your blessings toward us in Christ Jesus, for the blessings that we have every day, for the many opportunities we have to continually grow in your word and faith. Give us ears to hear, as Jesus said this Sunday, so that his word might be planted deeply in us and so that we might come to full maturity and fruitfulness, not only here in time, but also in the eternal life that you have prepared for us in Jesus Christ, your dear Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. All right. Have a good dinner tonight. I'm about to go have my dinner. <laughs>